everyone. Hi, Divas. This is Wanda from Wanda's Work Basket. Uh, it is a Tea and Talk Tuesday, and I wanted to show you some things I've been working on. Um, you know, you may know that I've uh, done the... This is Color Relaxation Women Fun with Wine, <laughs> and there are three women here. Uh, I had tried to... I finished it. I didn't... I said in a previous video that I wasn't going to finish it. But I did finish it, and um, there are still major popping drills that I have to address. And even where I use the Tombow adhesive glue, I'm not sure if you can see it, um, it, it, it's still popping. Things are still popping all over. And I don't think it shows up on camera, but they are popping. And it's very, very frustrating. So anyway, I'm going to have to roll this down real good. I'm going to have to seal it well, and we'll see. We'll see. Even where I glued it, the glue is showing. So I don't know. I don't know if I'll continue with this or not. The other one is the one I finished with Crystal. I finished this yesterday on my own. Um, it is the partial that we were doing on chatting with Crystal. Crystal and, Crystal and Crafts or whatever I'm calling that Thursday thing. Um, yeah, it's a whip and, whip and chat with Crystal. So, my granddaughter. So I finished it. Um, I had noticed some places that the, uh, the color was in the wrong place so I pried them up and put down the right color otherwise I wouldn't have had enough drills to finish to finish the thing so um, alright so this is this is the Park View by E. Cool By and it's a partial it's very pretty very pretty very shiny so I'm going to hang this up with, um, I, I'm going to frame it on a artist canvas and then hang that one up. So that's done. <coughs> the other one I finished lately, this is too big really to put on camera very well. I'm going to move my tea before I spill it. Move over here. Nope. You don't want to be on the light. Thank you. This is the Dreamer, not the Dreamer, the um, Diamond Art Club. It is a Chuck Pinson. It is huge. I love it. It's called Strength for the Journey. It's a church in the woods, and I love it because there's all kinds of surprises when you do it. There's um, deer down here. That I didn't notice in the original. Other things I didn't. There's uh, I saw the couple, but there is a figure here, and several other figures that are walking to the church. Now I have a few popping drills. Um, I was kind of upset with uh, Diamond Art Club. The drills were not perfect. When I've done a dreamer design, when I've done a uh, DIY moon shop, the drills were absolutely perfect. Um, and other diamond art clubs, I've I've had very good drills, but some of them, some of them are still popping up. Um, another thing I found in this pinson is I love the garden down here, and there's a wagon. I didn't even look to see, but there's a wagon in here, and more people walking, and there is like a barn, or, um, yeah, it looks like a barn because it's a long house feature, so I love it. This is Strength for the Journey from Diamond Art Club. Um, I see one that popped. I have to move it back to its spot. Get in there. This is a square drill 
and it has a few ABs in it. So I, I did put a few changes in it. Oh, I didn't drop dummy tape. One of the changes is <coughs> I did the cross at the top in jelly, um, in the 5200 jelly, shiny jelly ones from, um, oh my goodness. And one of my Wednesday, what's in Wanda's work basket Wednesdays, I do have it listed in that where I got some special gems from. And I like the effect. Another one I tried uh, in the, the windows here. I tried to put some round drills in. That's the only ones I had that were yellow sparkly. I wanted it to look like there was light coming out of the church. I'm just pushing back some popping drills here. And they're popping because, not this one up here. The ones down here are popping because of this, the round ones in the square holes. Um, and they're just slightly bigger than the squares. Rounds are slightly bigger than the squares. So, and this is the second time I've used round drills in for squares. And you just have to accommodate it. You just have to, like, uh, move the drills around that are right close to the ones that are uh, the circles, that are, the round ones that are embedded in there. There were a couple places where I changed out a... Um, a color of diamond or two because like in the middle of like the middle of the church a part of it was a big red one and it looked severely out of place I mean that's the first place your eyes would go to so I changed that to match the surrounding area there was another one in the hills and another uh, stray diamond or so in the hills here that was very obvious and there was one up in the sky that I also changed out there were so there were three that out of place colors um, it's where I put the original color in that it called for but it looked severely out of place so what I did was I took that one out popped it out and put in a uh, one that matches the surrounding area Okay, so that is Chuck Pinson's strength for the journey. I want to show you something else. I've been this. Oh, all these things is too much in my little room here. Too much stuff in my little room. I'm gonna bring the tea back because I need some. So what am I doing with pin bottles? Pill bottles. Okay. I saw a tip on Stitcherista who got it from someone else that if you have staticky drills, if you have drills that like clump together, you take a pill bottle, put in a quarter or um, another coin. And you put in a little piece of um, the static the fabric softener uh, dryer sheets. You put a piece of that in there. And you shake it up. And they unclump. And the static goes away. Uh, I've been spraying some of the ones with static guard that come in like that. And that's been working okay. But it kind of blows the things around a little bit. So I'm going to try this the next time I have static. Um, I have two pill bottles here because, well, one small and one larger. Um, don't know why I need two, but I have two different rooms, so maybe I'll do that. All right, another thing I want to show you. Okay, I have to show you. Is I've been working on making some... Oh, dear. Hang on. Clut strikes again. That's me. <laughs> dropped oh dear I dropped the thing I've been working on here which I'll show you next as we chat okay 
I've been working on cover minders. And I started making some for myself. Um, but And I fell in love with making them. So I'll show you what I have. I'm going to put them up on my Etsy shop um, eventually. I'll let you know when. I started with with these, um, the flowers with the button, a couple buttons, and a, um, uh, and a gem. There's some hot glue on here I want to um, use a hairdryer one to get rid of. These are a couple days old, so I'll show you this one better. This one has a heart charm on it. So there are several flowers that have gems and charms on them, and buttons, like that. Like that. I also did some <laughs> with, um, like, plastic gears and things, like they look kind of steampunky. One is a heart charm on the one that looks like a heart. And this one looks like clockworks. I have different color beads in those. As you can see, they're kind of made the same, but they have different color bead, uh, stones in it. And then I made some gear work. Uh, just gear works. It has a strange button on it, a charm, a key. And it's round. There's a whole set of those. Uh, also, I made some out of shells. Shells that have pieces of sea glass in them. Or a, or a bead. And I have three sets of these. These are pieces of sea glass with a charm on it in a nautical theme. You can see the, the anchor, the ship's wheel, and this is a shell with a little baby shell on it. I may put bling on there, I may not, but there are three sets of nautical ones. I just want to show you what I've been creating. I have boxes and boxes of fun things that I can use for more cover minders. Uh, I haven't put the magnets on the back yet, but I will. One thing is they can be refrigerator magnets with one magnet on the back, or they can be cover minders if they have a pair of um, magnets because they go on top of the flimsy uh, flimsy sheets, the, the plastic, clear plastic that goes on things. You kind of need a cover minder. Um, so that's that. I can't wait to put them up for sale and make many more of them. Okay, so I thought we would chat. Oh, these are my leftover drills from Strength from the Journey, by the way. I did run out of a few. That probably means that I put a few in the wrong places. So, um, and again, that was the Diamond Art Club, Strength for the Journey. I did it for the Chuck Along. Chuck along. So I'm going to put these back in my stash. Okay, that's that. <coughs> so now um, I was working on this with you before last week. And I'm going to do it again now. This is from uh, Diamond Paintings Galore. And I think I started it on Friday, on a Fearless Friday, because I've been talking about um, talking about things that make us afraid and how we can undo that, how we can work on it. This It, it kind of jumped ahead, so this is a continuation of that. And I've been reading pieces of <coughs> My Friend Fear from Mira Lee Patel, and she is an artist as well as a writer, and you can see some of her gorgeous, gorgeous watercolors behind um, her chatting. And I'm going to keep reading pieces of it, because it is, it has made such 
um, a difference. It's like, um, it's like you're, it's like a friend talking to you and making friends with fear because fear has a lot to teach us. And since I have anxiety, bad anxiety, um, social anxiety, even though I go and student teach and things like that, I go and, and um, this, this introvert has to do some extroverted things. Even though I enjoy them, it's hard to get out and, and do them. So anyway, I'm going to continue for the next 15 minutes and work on this with you as we talk about my friend Fear. I'm not sure where we left off because my camera just bugged out at the last minute when I was reading this before. And we were still on the author's note in the beginning. Sorry, taking some slugs of water here. And she says... This is a book that wants to be held. These pages are filled with honesty, and I hope some grace. My greatest wish is that you will find them useful. This book admits that everything changes. There's no use in holding on to sunshine or sorrow. With time, one melts into the other. Like you, both can be reborn. This is a book that was written to remind you of one thing. You are not alone. Wow. As um, I'm thinking about that and working on this, you aren't alone. I've noticed that a lot of people have started this hobby because of anxiety issues, just like I have. And it's hard. It's hard to go through day to day day-to-day um, -day problems. Wait, what am I on here? All right, I think I have to put the red ones away and start another color. Which is what I'm going to do right now. I save all the little plastic bags that I get from kits. Give the kits away and save the little plastic bags. I'm working on a system where I can uh, where I can categorize the gems, the little crystals. I mean, there's a lot of systems out there that helps you with remaining drills, you know, if you want to save the drills for anything. If the drills are really popping or bad, I don't save those, I chuck them. If the drills work very well, I save them by DMC number and you can look at um, several other people uh, diamonders online that do that that talk about their <clears throat> storage systems I'm not going to do that today but I want to make a system create a system where the gems um, you know that I can categorize the gems by size, by color, by whatever. Alrighty then. Yes, get all these beads. Oh my, okay. I just love these smiley faces. More beads. And it came with the pink pen with the regular tip, but I'm not using that. I'm using either the wax pencil and I have extra, so like I say down below, and uh, when we have I have a contest on, when we reach a hundred subscribers, uh, I have a number of these. So one of these will be the prizes for the giveaway. Now there's a, a giveaway at 100, at 250, at 500, and a thousand. And when we get to a thousand, there's a full Dreamers Design Kit that I can give away. I have other kits that I can give away. I have things like this tools. Uh, an extra hand turned pen from um, Jim, Jim's handmade pen shop. 
So I have lots of stuff that I can give away, and this is one of them. This wax is great to use for the gems because it doesn't scratch them, and it's easily sharpened. The other one I like to use is this pick-me-up tool. I may have mentioned that in another one before. It has the blue, like, uh, poster putty in it, and uh, it also doesn't scratch. Another thing I might use back and forth between them is this pencil this pen right here and it has a plastic tip on it I like that too because it doesn't scratch so those are the things I use sometimes I may use the tweezers that's that and I have some pink gunk that I'll use with. It comes with most kits that I'll use. Okay. Let's see, 10 or 15 more minutes. Let's get to work on one of the colors. This uh, will turn. You know what? I'm going to use the big fives. I like to use the biggest to the littlest when I'm working in the gems. So, number five the big one. 13 B S two is plus minus Q W I think this is the five because it's the bigger one. So I carefully cut between them. I'm going to put some in the little ball, and then I'm going to put some in a plastic baggie. Because I won't need that many of them here. Ooh, they're pretty. They're like a, a rusty red. I like that there's different sizes in the pack because, well, it makes it more interesting when you have different sizes with the different colors. I'm just going to stuff this in like it is at the moment. Then I'm gonna pull the, pour the rest into it. I also, you can buy these little baggies um, that are sturdier at um, Michael's or in the, in the jewelry supply, uh, the jewelry sales supply with the forms and all that kind of stuff. They have lots of different size baggies that you can get. All right, let's see. And again, I like to use the Tombow Aqua Glue underneath gems because, well, because they stay better on something that will to get a lot of use. I just put a dot or two on it, and then I'm going to, let's see, what am I going to try to use first? Since they're the big ones, I'm going to use the putty. As long as it comes off of the, yeah, that's good. <laughs> there was a question in one of the forums, on one of the, the Facebook groups, about um, whether there's a pen that you can load with a ton of different with a ton of regular drills and just keep putting them down without having to go pick one up one by one and as of yet I haven't seen that um, it would be very hard to do because they would, you'd have to like shake it all the time to get them to line up right. Um, even if you loaded them one way, like I'm thinking of a hollow pen, if you loaded them one way, they would still, some of them would flip and I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want that on, on any of my paintings. It's hard enough to get these to sit up right. Right? Oh, 
the reason I like to do the big ones first is so that the little ones can fit around it if I need to wiggle them in. Alrighty then. Back to the fear factor. <laughs> yes, I have bad anxiety from some things that happened to me in, in childhood that I am still working through. And I am a teacher and a minister, clergy, you know, ordained clergy. And I am a spiritual companion, which is someone that you go to if you have some deep questions about life, about spirit, um, and if you want to see more of God in your life or recognize where God is already active in your life, um, have your dreams helped in, to be in helping you interpret your own dreams and all kinds of things, um, just encouraging you in a spiritual way and walking with you in your journey. That's what a spiritual director or spiritual companion does. So... Um, and I have walked with other people through their fear, conquering their fear, and other people have walked with me through mine, and that's why I want to give, give back. Fear is not always your enemy. It was in our um, DNA instinctively because of all the the um, problems, our ancestry, I mean, talking about way back in caveman days, um, that our an way back ancestors needed that fear factor so that they would like run from fear, so they would react and not get like to um, predators that may be after them, uh, that kind of thing. So they had to have that fear reaction, the fight or flight reaction to fear. And um, it does serve you well in those instances, but I gotta tell you, it doesn't serve you well if you're just trying to get out the door, get to the car. If you're just trying to get yourself to go visit, it does not serve you well then. It certainly didn't serve me well as a pastor. <clears throat> so, and that's hard to admit because pastors are supposed to go visit and call and things like that. And I, I messed up with that. And that may be like really a lot to say, but I need to say that, that you are not alone in your fear journey. Just like um, Mira Patel um, talked about, you're not alone. And that's what a spiritual companion helps with too. You're not alone in your journey. Am I jumping around too much verbally? <laughs> You're gonna have, if you're gonna follow me, and I hope you do. I hope you like and subscribe. Uh, not just because you're interested in diamond painting or any of the other crafts that I do, or if you like the sound of my voice, whatever. Um, I do hope that you feel that you're not alone in the journey. That there's more to this life than having anxiety hold us back. I will always be working on that part of my personality. And maybe, you know, maybe you will too. <laughs> so, that's why. Where did I put the baggie? Oh, goody. Goody's here. That's why I'm doing this channel. So that you have somebody accompanying you on your journey. I do have another channel called Drawing Nearer, 
and I will link all that below. A friend and I have created a book that um, that is part prayer uh, experience and creative prompt. So we combine creativity and prayer together in this book. And that's that'll be that's where our website came from. Um, my co-author is Suzanne Halstead and as we get on the drawing near there's going to be some crafty things that she and I do, some artistic things that she and I do on the drawing near part. That's we help you th be very creative in your um, in your spiritual life. So that's that. I'm not going to talk about spiritual stuff on this channel because, you know, you may not be into that. And I get it, and I want to honor that. So, um... Mm. So that's that. Alright, I think I want to do the stuff around the face next. And that is an H. So I've got to find H. Oh, here it is. That was easy. H is a yellow thingy. I will get a baggie ready for that. Equal H. And I don't I don't write the number on it on the package. What I do is I'll show you. When I do these, and I, whoop, I pour out some of the diamonds that I'm going to use. Come on. And I know I'm going to be just using this and putting some away and then reusing it for the other sides. What I'm going to do is finish pouring them into the baggie. This is such um, riveting, <laughs> riveting uh, imagery here. All right, I pour the rest of the diamonds in there, allowing for static here. Come on, get down in there. There's so much I can tell you about anxiety and how I've been working through it <clears throat> and fear and how I've been working through that. Hopefully, if you are in the same situation, you can join me on these Tea and Talk Tuesdays and Fearless Fridays when I talk about fear. And I go through the My Friend Fear book with commentary. Okay. So, to remember that this is H, what I then do is I cut the the plastic around the letter. Okay. Leaving the letter on. And then I put that in the baggie with the drills. So that it has the H in the bag with the H drills. Okay, so that's that. <laughs> we have about 10 more minutes together. Start doing the face drills here. And again, I'm putting the glue down first for extra stickiness. And this one, I fear, is going to be too sticky for the little ones. No? Am I wrong? Oh. And, of course, this one goes upside down. Oh, you just love it. There. I have a question in a couple of the other... Um... 
diamond sites, diamond Facebook groups about what is it that most annoys you about diamond painting. Please um, put your comments below. What is it that most annoys you about diamond painting? Some are quite clear in their suggestions. And I'm loving it. I'm, I'm loving how people are reacting to the question and reacting to each other about what's the most frustrating thing for you. People are, are having um, a lot of trouble with kidding up and kidding down. Not trouble, but just, you know, like they don't like to do it. So, I don't mind. I like organizing things, but for some reason I can't keep them organized. Um, stay there. So, I might be talking about that on the channel as I found some Uh, another type of organization that for those of us who are creative and like to see things that if they put them away and we can't see them they don't exist anymore pretty much uh, if you're like that then I'll talk about my journey with the, that with the website that um, That might that I'm trying out. All right. So you know, I come by fear and anxiety by way of family. Um, my dad, who is now passed for about seven years, he had major anxiety. There's a depressive um, gene or something that goes down in my family, in, through his family, and that goes way, way back. And I was blessed with it. And yes, my kids um, and other relatives have it. And that doesn't make us any different than anyone else. Okay. It doesn't mean we're defective in some way. But that we have to learn to work with our fear. We have to learn to cooperate with it, recognize what it's there to do, and, you know, it's for being on keen alert. And like I said, back in the caveman days, they needed. They needed to be alerted to those life-threatening things. So their reaction to fear was either to run or fight, fight or flight. And I've also heard other people add one called freeze. That's where you're just, you know, so shocked and stunned at what's going on that you just stop and freeze. <clears throat> and I got to tell you, frustrating. What frustrates me is getting these drills on without get, get them on the right way without them flipping over. Anyway, um, like you think about a deer in a headlight. Headlights. The lights blind them and they just stand and stare at you. Like they're a piece of the background and like you won't see them. Um, so that's the freeze response. So there's three, and I've added a fourth one myself, called flow. So you can either, am I getting this right here? Yeah. You can either fight the threat, a lot of us do. Or it works against us. We fight it. We say, oh, there's a leaf here full of it, too. Uh, 
<clears throat> we fight the fear, we fight it, we push on, we get angry and we rail against what it is we're really fearing. Um, anger is a symptom. It's not an, it's an emotion that's a symptom. It just comes up. It's not bad or, or good or anything, but it alerts you. <clears throat> it alerts you to things that you want changed. It's not a bad thing. What you do with that anger, it can be good or bad. How you use that anger, just like fear. How you use your fear. So when we're afraid, sometimes we get angry and we push back. It usually means there's something that we're afraid of. Another thing is to flee, to run away from it. Like, okay, it's too much, I can't handle it, I'm gonna run away. So it can't get me. Um, when I was a young mom, my kids are adults now, and I have grandkids now. When I was a young mom, I used to think, if only I could just run away for a few days, if I could just get away from being a mom for a few days, I could come back and be the best mom ever. I could get back and be the mom that I really want to be. And I would, granted, I wasn't using that time that I did have to care for myself, as well as the house and everything else you try to get done when the kids are asleep. Um, I wasn't taking care of my own... Um, anxiety or fear or depression at that point. So so I just wanted to run. <coughs> I wanted to run away from it all. And <coughs> granted our family is privileged enough that and I, you know, I say that knowing what the word privilege is doing in our society right now and how people are viewing that. But I am very, very grateful that our family had a cap, has a cabin in the Poconos and has um, a place down by the Atlantic Beach. Uh, I'm not going to say where, but, you know, it's down at the seashore that I can run away to. We've got great quiet libraries, we've got parks that I love um, <clears throat> that are around. And I often used to escape to one of my favorite county parks, Montgomery County Parks. Ooh, shouldn't have said that. I'll have to edit that out. At the parks I'd take my journal, I would walk, I would pray, and journal some more. And that was my way of escape. My mom was usually always around, and she loved to babysit. So um, if I ever really got bad and I wanted to flee, I wouldn't run away and change my identity and stuff like that. No, I loved my family. It just got too much for me at times. So and mom knew I needed to get away. My mom and my grandmother would watch the kids while I de-escalated. <laughs> so that's the flight part of it. The freeze, again, is when you're just in shock. When you're... I liken it to if you're in an airplane and it was just announced that, you know, you put the flotation device on and and put your head between your knees and all that stuff because we're in, in a lot of turbulence and we might go down. That kind of fear, the only thing you do is freeze. It's like shock. It's like, okay, I can't even figure out how to put the oxygen mask on even though I've seen the demonstration a billion times. Um, stuff like that. That's a freeze response. Um, the, uh, oh, I don't know what's happening. I can't understand what's happening. And can you explain it to me again? Can you, um, 
I need help. Um, I don't understand this. What's going on? That's the freeze response to all this. Oh, I'm over. I'm 45 minutes in now. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> That's the freeze response. It's like you're just, like, you can't do anything. Like, okay, I'm not going to... Like, if you're having a financial crisis, you avoid doing the bills because you don't want to see what's going on. Um, you avoid opening the mail. You avoid answering phone calls, that kind of thing. If you're in debt and you are unemployed or, or whatever and you just don't want to deal with the consequences of your actions or the consequences of the actions upon you, then you, you, you freeze. <clears throat> That's part of freezing. My other one is flow. And I think I'm working the most on this one. Um, it's something I thought of. It's not something I found in any books or anything. So it's my own idea. Uh, in, in one of the trainings that I was having about that I went to for stress and <laughs> mental health. Uh, it was, it's called the Gestalt approach, Gestalt pastoral care. I'm trained in that as a spiritual companion. And one of the things they say is you go with the resistance, you go with the pain, you feel where the pain is in your body or um, where the psychic pain is in your mind or your heart spirit, whatever, and you ask the pain what it needs. You go with the resistance. Instead of um, avoiding it, instead of running from it, instead of fighting it, you actually go with it. You ask it what, it, what it's showing you, what it's telling you, and you go with it. Okay, so say you have a pain in... Um, <clears throat> your throat, and I can use this as a personal example. If your throat closes every time you are asked to speak in public, or that kind of thing, that was that was my thing. Uh, I'd ask you'd ask your throat, why can't you open? What's going on? How do you, well, how do you feel? Can you explain how you feel? And as my throat, I would say, I am tight because I don't want uh, I don't want her to say anything she'd be embarrassed for later. Okay, I don't want her to talk because <sighs> I'm afraid that what she has to say will be ridiculed or judged or whatever the case may be. And I'll explain all that in a, at a later date as to how that happened to me. But if you realize that's going with the flow. So if you realize there's a pain in your body or uh, something that's not functioning correctly in your, um, in your body, you ask it, what's the problem? And let it speak. We already do something like that. When we um, talk about a stomach ache and we say, I just can't stomach that, you know? Or you have a headache and you say, I just can't wrap my head around it. I just don't understand. Um, things like that. We already give our body ways to speak to us. And I'm use, using body as an example, but it could be a situation, it could be a dream, it could be lots of different things. That if you flow with it and try to understand it and ask it what's, why is it there, what, it, what are you trying to tell me? That's going with the flow with what's already there to cope. So, I, I, like I said, I believe there are four ways of coping with your fear, of dealing with it, of working with your fear. 
and I think it's not a natural way flow is not a natural way to go it's not something that um, that is usually learned we have so many examples in our families of and not just mine but in our families in general of anger of fighting back of um, just uh, reacting immediately to fear by either running away or fighting back or freezing in place that going with the flow is really hard we don't have a, a lot of examples of it in our uh, family situations we didn't grow up learning how to do that at least I didn't maybe you did but I didn't what are your comments below? Uh, have what's I'm not going to ask you your to write down your favorite way of dealing with fear. You can if you want to, but I'm not going to ask you that because that's personal. Um, if you want to, if you want help working with your dreams or um, learning how to go with the flow, then personal message me and maybe we can set up some times for um, spiritual companionship and I it's how I make a living too so it's not just you know I, I do have to charge for that kind of thing per hour so only because I need to make a living too and I am a trained cer certified um, spiritual companion so anyway um, yeah, if you want help learning how to go with the flow to battle your fear or anxiety or depression, then give me a personal message on Facebook and we can work it out. Yeah, so we're just about done with our time here today. Oh yeah, we are. I didn't really mean to run on an hour, but that's, I think fear is a huge, huge topic that we need to continue to talk about. Um, lots and lots of talk on that topic. You probably have a lot to say and a lot of feelings about it yourself. So, <clears throat> as I am working on this tissue box... <laughs> from diamond paintings galore I'm trying to get one of these instead of a bunch on the thing at the same time here <sighs> turns over I hate that so don't forget the contest like and subscribe first contest is 100 subscribers and uh Lots of prizes to give out. Okay. All right. Tell your friends. Um, leave your comments below so we can start a conversation. And we'll go from there. All right. So I wish you a beautiful, beautiful day. Um, it's right now when I'm recording this, it's springtime. It's beautiful. It's right after Easter. And I hope you stick around so we can be friends. Okay? Bye for now. Bye.